oh, this is my cup, right? This is all the energy that I have, all the gifts, the blessings, whatever the case may be, right? So because my cup is half full, I should not be pouring into other fucking people. Correct. <laughs> Period. Or else your cup's going to be empty. Hello. But a lot of people are doing pouring from this as opposed to mm-hmm. pouring from the overflow, which would be the vessel that you are sitting upon. Right, right. But once the glass is overflowing, then you then you pour in other people. But I think that the yeah. American society in general is caught up in that you should be sharing from your lack. And like, girl, yeah. what the fuck? We we all gonna be jacked up if that's what I'm doing. I want you to friends we're back for black and curious i'm kandrin what up what up it is Deja. how y'all do hello if you've never been here before welcome we do a cross section of pop culture in real life and we're starting a new series today but first what are you drinking yeah so today the kitchen chemist has a take on an agua fresca i just threw some tequila in it so basically it's just like uh, bubbly water, strawberry mango, um, good and gather water, uh, sparkling water, basically, and mm-hmm. then some mango nectar and a splash of lime juice and tequila. There you go. <laughs> that sounds delicious. I no, am having a sauce jar. <laughs> yeah, I am having a hot concoction. So I I started following. Shout out to cousin Miki. I started following this guy who makes like his own teas and stuff. So it inspired me to like buy a French press. So I've been out here like combining coffees and teas and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, I'm having a basically a dirty chai, um, but with some brown sugar. What do you call that thing? Brown sugar creamer from Trader Joe's and a splash, a splash of crown vanilla. Well, hello. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> that sounds very, very, very delicious. That's, is that is incredible. the uh, rich auntie's um, hot toddy. Absolutely. <laughs> and I am a fan of a hot toddy, just so we're clear. We are. Okay. okay. We share that. Okay. We share that. Um, All right. So we're starting yes. a new sort of series, if you will. Um, we had a previous conversation and it started me thinking about like the relationship with yourself um and how to like take care of it how to cultivate it and I'm sort of in this space of like shifting a lot in my I don't know it's like a it's like an internal shift I don't know how else to explain it um I also just had a birthday so sometimes that happens but it just like happened all at once in the last like month is like everything has been bearing down on me so I'm like okay maybe we should have this conversation so we're going to talk in this series about the relationship with yourself. So fitting. So. It's a very black and curious thing. Invest in yourself so that you can be the best you every day. Yeah. So like sort of how do you kind of define the relationship with yourself? How do you treat it? I feel like at this stage, I'm in a long-term relationship with myself Mm -hmm. and in what I mean by that is really honoring the things that um, I like and the things that I don't like like honoring the boundaries or changing the behaviors or removing myself Um, I think that I'm like in the sweet spot when I when I mean like long-term relationship because now I'm in a place where it's just I feel the most comfortable I've ever felt within myself despite things that I've made mention to on this um, podcast before, be it solo videos or otherwise um, dealing with my health issues aside. Um, who I am is who I am. And I like that person. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it, it, it has taken a very long time to get to a place of acceptance, which is the sweet spot. Yeah. What about you? My relationship with myself is tumultuous. <laughs> Listen. It has been, it has been. tumultuous. Um, I just say that because 
I say that because I feel like I knew myself really, really well as a kid. And as you grow up, you sort of think that you're supposed to like shift all of these things and like, oh, this is how the world really works. And I find myself just trying to get back to the relationship I had when I was younger. Yeah. I feel like I had an excellent relationship with myself until about 24, five-ish. Mm. Um, also coinciding with my time in Miami. Um, but um, yeah, it just feels like it just, it fell off the rail somewhere there um, of trying to kind of like survive and like be in new environments and mm. not necessarily feeling like my best or like the things that I had planned or thought through or worked toward were working out. And it really took a toll on me. Girl. And I find myself now in the last, I would say, and I, Honestly, this is something I've been working on a lot in therapy, um, just being nicer and kinder to myself <laughs> because I find that, yeah, I'm just like in the last couple of years, I'm finally getting to a place where I'm like, no, actually, that's not necessarily how the world works and it doesn't have to be how your world works. And so you should adjust accordingly mm -hmm. and sort of starting to make those steps toward that. And I think just going back to a previous conversation or a series of conversations we had about burnout, I think some of that is due in part to living out of alignment for so long. Mm -hmm. But like I said, um, I think it was in the conversation we had with the uh, Knowing Yourself Without Influence. Shout out to Cantrin for the excellent name. Um, <laughs> but like the way the world is set up, it is designed like human culture or not human culture, but American culture specifically is specifically, designed yeah. to distract you from yourself. Mm -hmm. Even even while still being a very individualistic culture, there's so many things to distract you from the individual. So it's just kind of like you go through, I feel like you grow up and then you go, if you go off to college or go off into the real world, wherever the case may be, um you start a new growing process yeah because the world that you knew within the, the confines of your familial home is totally different than the world outside of that Definitely. and so how you identified in that space and how you're going to identify in this new space is going to be totally different so it, sure. it only makes the most sense that when we went off to college or when you finally left college and you went down to Miami um you had a re-emergence of self and or, or like a question of identity a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, how yeah, do I want to show also, up? Also, I think I didn't give enough credence and enough weight to um, like environmental kind of impacts on your sense of self. Because when I mm. moved after I left college, when I moved to Atlanta, I felt very much like myself. I very much felt Negative the most, <laughs> most myself that I had ever felt. And it wasn't just that. It's um, those friendships. Those are my longest lasting friendships. I mean, aside from like a college friendships and stuff like that, but like my adult friendships that I made after college, I am still friends with a solid 60% of the people that I met in that even just year and a half time that I was there full time. Um, and then I was kind of back and forth when I went to law school. So um, I am still friends with most of those people. Yeah. They are my most important friendships, honestly, some of my most important friendships. And I felt like I was in community with people. And that is something we'll get to this conversation and I'll come back to it. Um, we're going to have a deeper conversation about values, but it just felt better. But I was just like, oh, well, maybe... <laughs> maybe there's something else out there to see. Like I didn't think that I was ready to make a final home at 22 or three or whatever, how old I was. I was like, oh, let's try something else and I'll come back. And I am just trying to go back. <laughs> um, I mean, at least you had the 
like gumption to leave and explore what your life could be like. I feel like yeah. we, it's interesting because you said that like, you feel like you knew who you were and you knew yourself identity the most as a child. And then you somewhere, you know, and then adulting, you got lost along the way, so to speak. Yeah. I feel like we're the opposite. <laughs> Mm. like I it's interesting I had I had a foundation and that still exists right but I think the biggest thing is like I didn't um it's not that I didn't like myself it was more like the world doesn't like me so there's something wrong with me and I feel like for Mm -hmm. a very long time even up until like as I'm still working through it at 39 um I my when things are not working out like we said like you make all these plans and then yeah you know, from plan a to plan uh, z <laughs> and don't let them work out so I always go back to okay I did something wrong something wrong with me and I, that comes out of my childhood because mm. you know like when we were growing up, the the thing was to be, you know, like rail thin and white, for lack of better ways to describe it. Like that was the the popularity point, or racially ambiguous. Not any of those things, and I think that that really shaped my identity a lot as a young person, mm. like trying to figure out, you know, how I fit in the world. Yeah, yeah. I just think for me, I always had a rich, a very rich inner life just a wild imagination and just feeling like I could try anything I could do anything I could be anything and I think that is the core part of my identity and when that was like challenged in a very real way it shook me to my core and I think I think that's what it is like adulthood sort of challenged that idea and Adulting sucks. Not great. What is it that what um the girls that getting grown? Adulting is the worst hood. <laughs> yeah, the worst hood that I've ever endeavored to live in. I love that so much. Yeah. But yes, it is factual because you really be going through a lot as like like that when you hit adulting, it's like <laughs> the roller like coaster adulting, like outside of. <laughs> the fun parts like once you have clubbed all you care to club (laughs) once you have drank all that you care to drink once you have like experienced that blissful freedom of being like a young adult and you hit like not young adult anymore you're like this shit is terrible what in god (laughs) what are we doing here this is it this is what this like, is the whole rest of I my can't life just living if I can pay bills like this is not she's not doing that yeah. <laughs> so that's that what is... you end up into I feel like we talked about this a little bit last year with like the um the monotony or the mundane era of life that's what yeah. this is <laughs> now let's so, rich and even then yeah. they might have a, a mundane point in life because they've done all the things you have the money and the means the accent yeah absolutely so I actually found an article that talked about sort of the 12 keys to a great self-relationship I will not we probably won't go through all 12 here but I'm going to highlight some of the things I felt are the most important and I will drop a link to the article down below (laughs) um one of these that like really stood out to me it's on psychology today by the way Mm -hmm. um is setting intentions and cultivating awareness so I think that's sort of where I am now where I'm just getting more like intentional about what I'm doing about listening to myself having that awareness of like listening to my instincts and really leaning on those more so than I have before Mm -hmm. I think it's funny like as you made mention of that I was sitting here just kind of like damn am I doing things in out of intention or like am I just continuing to fly by the seat of my pants and I don't know because I'm naturally a very intentional person in terms of like you know the relationships I have especially now like the relationships I have and the things that I involve myself in and so like I feel like I don't know that I can't tell the difference 
and that that will be like uh, in terms of like the next plateau because you know you reach a graduation point I think we talked about that in the last um, block too yes. um that that will be my new marker like okay how do you feel about this I think honestly boom this is it for me the intentionality of things is how I feel So if it feels right, if it feels good, if it feels, if it gives me energy, like all the positive things, great, we're in the right direction. If at any point I feel like the wavering in my gut, I feel nervous, I'm questioning, I'm anxious, I'm, you know, like, did I do something wrong? Then this is not the right uh, place to be headed in. Like, that's how I've been living for a while without thinking about it. So maybe I'm just unconsciously intentional because that's the barometer that I use right that's good I am going to definitely do a very well we're going to do a like a deep dive on value systems and all of that stuff so I think this is going to come back up um but yeah like I'm going I am working on developing a system about being intentional because that is who I am as a human I'm going to systematize something um so I'll be loving oh. you. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm just you help us push it together, okay? Um, that, that good earth energy, you ground things. Grounding. Um. So another thing on here that I think is interesting and also like kind of feels in alignment with what we're doing is like adapting an attitude of curiosity and acceptance. So just trying to move forward without excess fear. Um, cool child or getting stuck in indecision so I think that's kind of in alignment with we're doing with what we're doing is like we're kind of trying to look at the world in a more curious way which is hence our platform name which is black and curious um (laughs) so and I'm definitely trying to I find myself more so trying to like look at myself without judgment Mm-hmm. so much because my instinct is to judge myself and to judge myself harsh harshly and often based on the outcome mm-hmm. not based on the input so wow okay that's profound just let's 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 let that sit there for a second before you keep on talking you just really said something repeat that friend i am working on <laughs> I'm working on like not judging myself so harshly based on output versus input. So I mentioned this book here before and um, I'll raise it again, Thinking in Bets. This is something yeah. that I'm like, real. that's really like reprogramming in my head because it's like, yeah, sometimes things work out, but sometimes it's not because of anything you did. Sometimes they just work out um, or you can even make poor decisions and it just falls in your favor. Or sometimes uh, what, what did you say to me good. years ago? I'd be having crazy favor. You right. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes you can make really good decisions, solid decisions, firmly planted in the truth. Okay. And the shit does not work out. And it sure don't, but the Lord loves problem. babies and fools. That's what the old people say. Right, but, but the point is that like, just because something didn't work out doesn't mean that you've done something horribly wrong and you have to beat yourself up about it. Yeah. And honestly, y'all, that statement that she just made has been a through line in our relationship because my go-to is always that somehow I did something wrong. And Kendra, for years, even before we were like as evolved as we are now, that is some version of that you have said to me on a number of occasions because like you, like we share that very critical harshness uh, of ourselves and so yeah. like, I feel like in the times in which, in which you were like ministering that to me, because it's, it's a word, right? Um, you were also kind of speaking to yourself too, you know, like, cause you see the, the, we see ourselves in each other, not necessarily right. through exact situations, but in what, in the ways we communicate with one another. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you wouldn't love on your friend that way, why would you you do that to yourself, you know? Yeah. And another uh, one of the points in this article that goes right along with what we were just saying is cultivating realistically optimistic behavior. So just Hmm. like trying to take it easy on yourself sometimes. That's really what I have worked really 
hard on in therapy in the last few years of just Jesus Christ, like just not being so incredibly hard on myself and looking at everything as like either a failure or a success. That's mm-hmm. also something in thinking about. It. I recommend this book very highly. Um, I'm gonna have to do the audio book because I've been struggling with like the non-fictional text. <laughs> fair. Um, and I, I'm not That's all the way through me. it either, but it talks about not really thinking about things in a zero sum sort of way. So even when things work out, thinking of it more of like, okay, this decision has like an 89% chance of success like, <laughs> versus like, okay, if I do this, then I'll have this. Like, no, that like there, it's an 89%. So that also means that there's an 11% chance that this doesn't work out. So like, and those two things are, are they're not equally likely, but they are one, they're both there. The, they both exist. Or being able to say like, hmm, I'm like 50% sure that's true. Maybe not. I don't know. Or like my, my favorite phrase is like, I think, but I'm willing to be wrong on that. Like sometimes I know what I know, but I'm also quick to tell you, like, I am happy to be wrong about this. I am so yeah. happy if this works out and I am wrong about this one because it could. Yeah. So I think just realizing that, like, it's not zero sum all the time. I like that. And sometimes you can fail a bunch of stuff. And those are things that are you can fail a bunch of stuff. But it's teaching you a lot of what you need for something that's coming down the road that you can't maybe even see yet hmm touche so like something that I'm working on now like I have all the pieces because these are all things that I've already done that I'm sort of trying to roll into a new thing so okay I think Honestly, like the biggest challenge is just kind of like letting go so that you're, you are Mm -hmm. able to be optimistic about whatever comes your way and to be open to receive, um, whatever outcome may come. Like we tend to, and I know me, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily speak for everybody, but I think Mm -hmm. that people in general, myself included, um, become so set on the outcome that we desire that it's yeah. hard to go through whatever the process is to get to the other side because mm-hmm. if it's looking like it's that 11 percent ain't finna work out <laughs> like mm-hmm. okay quit I quit you know I'm not gonna keep going yeah yeah definitely so yeah I think just keep to continue moving even in the space of like not necessarily feel like it's going to work out and being open to evolving and things of that nature I think those have all sort of helped me to work on things seeing things as such a zero-sum situation and then the last one that I wanted to raise because I think this one is really really big avoiding the selfish trap so basically Everybody teaches you it is so terrible. Everybody teaches you it's so terrible to be selfish. And when people want to be, sometimes when people want to insult you, so-called insult you, they will call you selfish. And it's like, no, I am taking care of myself as Mm -hmm. you should also take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And as a result, like that is the only way that I'm going to be good for anybody else is if I take care of myself. And like being uh, selfish is not the insult that people think that it is. <laughs> I think there's a good level, a good level of like healthy uh, selfishness to your yeah, point. Yeah, of course. You have to, like one of my mentors, she did like a, and I remember teaching this to somebody else, but she did like this whole like cup metaphor and she was basically like, your, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it now. So this is my cup, right? This is all the energy that I have, all the gifts, the blessings, whatever the case may be, right? So because my cup is half full, I should not be pouring into other fucking people. Correct. <laughs> Period. Or else your cup's gonna be empty. Hello. 
but a lot of people are doing pouring from this as opposed to mm-hmm. pouring from the overflow which would be the vessel that you are sitting upon right right. But once the glass is overflowing then you then you pour into other people but i think that the american society in general is caught up in that you should be sharing from your lack and like girl yeah. what the fuck we, we all gonna be jacked up if that's what i'm doing and also, that's what we are doing I want to say specifically, I think this is true of women. Like everyone is looking for a lot of women to to be the caretakers, to do the things, to be the provider. You know, like to really keep just it. like keep going. <laughs> yeah, to perpetually live at that. And then uh, if somebody has a, a eyedropper of something, a little piece of something to drop by your cup, then that's enough. And that ought to be sufficient. right. And I'm just here to say that it's not. Hell no. So... And do all that at an excellent level. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, girl, I don't have nothing to give. <laughs> so anyways, that's sort of where we are with the relationship with self just wanted to give some background as we have some conversations we're going to have some conversations of course together we're going to upload some solo episodes and then we're going to have some bring some of our friends on to yes. talk Thanks to the show give you all a little curious exploration into different ways so self-care and building that relationship with yourself absolutely so drop down in the comments let us know what you think give us some suggestions we'd love to hear them Oh, yeah. like comment and subscribe y'all check, check out blackandcurious.com and we will see you next time bye <laughs>